In the previous lesson, we introduced the idea of using C Sharp and Visual Studio to write Hadoop MapReduce jobs. If you haven't seen that video, you might want to go back and watch that because in, in that video, we actually go through the process of setting up a Visual Studio solution, adding proper references, and submitting the Hadoop MapReduce job to the Hadoop subsystem. So if you're completely up to speed on that, then in this lesson, we're going to look at doing something more realistic. In that lesson, we the square roots of numbers in a file, which we wouldn't probably use Hadoop for that. In this lesson, we'll actually use Hadoop to do something interesting, that is to process Twitter data from native JSON format and do some counts and analysis on hashtags that we find within the tweets. The source data that we have to work with looks something like this, and this is what Twitter data might look like if you obtained it from Twitter or from a data provider. And it's laid out in a relatively complex JSON format. You can see there are various levels and nested objects within this Twitter message. The part we're interested in for this relatively simple analysis is looking at the content and summing up how many counts of hashtags we have from all the tweets we've collected. In this lesson, I'm not going to start from scratch. I'm actually going to start with a MapReduce job that's complete. And we'll just look through it and see how it works, and then run it and look at the output. And I think by going through that, you get a pretty good sense of how this is actually working under the covers. If you're confused by this and are not familiar with how these jobs are structured, do go back and look at the previous lesson on the square root problem, where we really introduced the, how these jobs are structured, because we're really just building on that in this lesson. So this MapReduce job has a main program, as before and it connects to Hadoop and it submits the Twitter processing job. That's what this job is called in this example. The Twitter processing job itself references the Twitter mapper and the reducer. So those will automatically get pulled into the job. And then as before, we're configuring an input and output folder. And these are hard coded, which in production we probably would want in an environment variable or some other way, but here they're hard coded. And then I've added this line to delete the output folder to make sure that we're not appending data, but we're starting with a clean output every time we might run this. As with the square root example, we do have a mapper class. This is called Twitter mapper. But in this case, instead of the mapper class doing all the work itself, Twitter mapper is actually passing the input line to this custom routine that I wrote in this hashtag counter called dot process. So it will pass in the string and it will get back in a an array list of hashtags that were found in that tweet. So each input line is a tweet and the return is an array of zero or more hashtags that were found in that tweet. And then for each of those hashtags, what's emitted is the hashtag and then the static hard-coded number one. Let's take a quick look at that hashtag counter. Hashtag counter is just a helper class and what it does is to read the tweet and parse it apart and it's using json.net to do that so it will take that large tweet that we saw in this example and pull that apart and turn it into a nested object that we can then take a look at within our C sharp code so it'll do a couple of checks and make sure that this thing really is a tweet because our data feed comes from a provider that will provide Twitter and Facebook and other things so we just want to look at Twitter, so we're filtering that out right away as we process this. Then we'll look and make sure we have interaction content and grab that content out of the tweet, which essentially will be this field right here. And we'll know that that field probably has some hashtags in it, or at least some of the time. So we'll split that apart and look for any word that starts with a hashtag and has some length and isn't null, so we're doing kind of some ETL cleansing along the way here to make sure we only get what we want. And then finally, if all those checks are passed, each hashtag that we find will add to the array list, and we are, again, passing that through yet another cleaner to go through and strip out anything that's not a digit or a letter and convert to lowercase. So you can see we're doing some cleansing along the way here. And then finally, we return the array back to the mapper program. The mapper program then takes the array, and for each hashtag it finds, it just emits that out at the other side. And to give you an example of what just doing that much, just the mapper will do, it will produce this output. So I have a hashtag, for example, marketing that appears once and then appears again. You can see the word analytics appears over and over. 
you can see the word cloud appears in this tweet up here. It appears again down here. Well, this isn't really that useful. We need these summarized, and that's what the reducer does. And when we have a reducer, Hadoop will do a little bit more work for us. It will actually sort our output so that this reduce function we're looking at will receive all of the occurrences of a single key. And when those keys come in, this routine is just going through and adding up all the ones. And we'll come up with a total value and then emit one line for, for example, analytics and how many times did that occur over all of the files that were processed. So with that introduction, let's go ahead and run this and see what kind of output we get. And just as our last MapReduce job ran, this will inspect all of the dependencies that are needed to be sent to Hadoop along with the code. In this case, we've added the Newtonsoft JSON.NET library. And in the last MapReduce job, you might have remembered that the map percentage went to 100 and Reduce immediately you know, finished up and, and the job returned. In this case, the map will go to 100 and it will take a little bit longer than that because Reduce needs to run as well. And now reduce is finished, and the job's completed. So let's go and see what we got out of that. And just to remind you that without the reduce, we just get a long list of hashtags, then they all say one. What we're looking for is for these to be reduced down so that, for example, all the marketings are together with the number greater than one. So let's see if that's what we actually got. So if I go into my output, social media folder and look at the file. Now I can see that this has indeed been reduced. And none of these values should be less than 10. And I can see they all seem to be more than that because within the code I wrote the rule that I don't want to see things that are mentioned like one time. So if somebody's making up their own hashtags, I really want to ignore that. That's just kind of noise. So now we've continued to use C Sharp to develop our MapReduce jobs and we're starting to get into doing things that are a lot more interesting, analyzing social media data, taking relatively unstructured or semi-structured data and turning it into something that looks a lot more like the relational data we might be able to easily analyze with our BI tools. And in future lessons, we'll get into more detail and do some yet more interesting things.